somewhere so that God can begin to bless that and begin to honor that and do a work in your life. I think that's an amazing, amazing story. Don't you all, you all get something from that? Yes. Praise God, man. Thank you, Billy. You did great. You're all nervous and stuff, man. You're like, I don't know if I can do this or not. Praise God. All right. We got a, oh, we got plenty of time. Praise God. All right. This is going to be, I, I always say, you know, you're going to hear me say, this is my favorite one. They're all my favorite, okay, because I love uh, the family that God is bringing here. But, man, these guys are kind of like, y'all have been here for like, you're one of the originals, man. I mean, you guys have been here since way early quest days, right? I mean, uh, from, were you here from day one? Not quite day one. From quest. Y'all come on up and talk to these folks, okay, instead of talking to me down there. Praise God. Y'all get up for Nick and Leah. Nick's my riding buddy, man. I'm going to tell on Nick. Can I tell on you, Nick? Yeah, go ahead. Here, here's the mic. All right. I want Nick Nick over here. Yeah. So I'm going to tell on Nick. When, when Nick and I were first getting to know each other, we loved to ride our Harleys together, right? And so I, can t I got two stories. Man, I got so many stories on you, bro. So let me give you a couple of history for Nick. Nick's really laid back. He's chill. He's a great guy. And so one time, I think it was our first long ride that we did, and Nick, man, he's old school, man, and so, and we're no, there's no perfect people at our church, and so that's what I love about our church, and so Nick and I are on this ride, and I don't remember where we went, but we went all over the place, and what I, you know what I'm saying, don't you? You know where I'm going, don't you? So the longer the day is, the worse his language got. I don't know what the heck that deal is, man. It was hilarious. By the time we got off the bike, man, I, need a, I needed a beeping machine, like beep, 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 beep. Anyway, bro, beep, beep, beep. I'm like, dude, and it was so funny because, this beautiful lady right here, you could tell she was just so embarrassed. I was like, man, don't worry about it. Man. We don't care about all that, man. God knows his heart, man, and he's got, a, he's got an amazing heart. And then another time, man, just recently, um, you know, I know I'm, we're, there's some older folks in here, you know, so it's all cool. Uh, and, 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 and I wanted, I was going to go for a ride one day. It was one of the nicer days oh, we Lord. just had recently. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm telling, man. And so we're, <laughs> we're out for a ride, dude. It was great. I was going to go for a ride, and, and I took down 982, man, and I got over there, the turnoff for his road, and they're, they're, they're home. And I thought, man, I'm going to go see Nick and, and see if he wants to go for a quick ride. It was late in the evening. It was around 5 or not even, it was about 4 o'clock. Yeah. And so I thought, man, I'm going to stop by and pick up Nick. We'll go for a quick ride around the lake and, and come back and it'll just be good therapy for the both of us man and so I get to his gate the gate is locked right I'm kind of honking my horn revving the bike up I know he can hear my Harley right and so I see him peeking out the window right and, I'm like, and I know he's deciding do I open this door or do I stay in because when he came out four o'clock in the afternoon the dude already had his jammies on man already had a jammies on Four o'clock in the morning. You ain't that old, man. Yeah, I just got done working. I know, I know. Took Praise a shower, God. got yeah. comfortable. But I did get him finally into jeans, and we got on the Harley, and we did go At for a ride. I didn't ride in my jammies, man. Yeah, you didn't ride. But that would have been cool, man. I mean, I would have been cured with that. And then you got to come home and right to bed. So we have history, man. This is a great family. They've been with us for a, a long time. And one of the cool things that I love about families that have been with us for a long time, one of the things that you get to, you get to be a part of are the ups and downs of our faith, the ups and downs of finances, the up downs of struggles. You know, that's part of about being a family, right? I mean, being a family doesn't mean we just get, you just get me, like Pastor Mike, you're not gonna get me just in the good times. You know, I'm not perfect. I'm going to offend you at some point. If you don't, if I haven't, hang out a little bit. I'm sure one time I'm going to give you some offense, man. Why? We're people. Yeah. And I'm not a perfect person. I never claim that, man. I'm just as human as you are. And uh, I make Robin mad all the time. Praise God. It's all good. But the idea, man, is that as a family, we can do life together. And that's what I love about Nick and Leah is we've done life together, man. I mean, I can pretty much talk to this couple, man, just as plain. I don't have to sugarcoat anything. And that's what I love about them. So, Nick, kind of give me some 411. Give us all, kind of update us a little bit of, uh, of your view about giving and generosity before the Blessed Life series. What was that all about for you? Well, man, you know, I was like way deep in the world in my day. And my view of Christians and Christianity weren't, weren't well. And uh, I'd be like watching TV and see this dude in a $5,000 suit with $20,000 worth of rings on driving a $50,000 Mercedes asking me for money. I'm like, are you crazy, dude? You got, you know, sell some of your stuff. You know, if you want money, I mean, you know, so uh, it, it's been a long walk for me to get to where I'm at, you know, and this is my second time going through the blessed life. And uh, the first time we went through it, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll give this a try. And I start, we started tithing, talked about it. And, but I tell you, man, it was, 
I, I would grieve over every dime on that check that I was writing and thinking, man, you know, that's a, that's a set of exhaust pipes right there I'm giving away, you know, and uh, all kinds of excuses. And I, I made it a chore to give as a, a bill, just one of the bills, man. If I have enough left when I get down to this point, I'll write the check. And Let me stop you right there because, man, that speaks to me. <clears throat> That speaks to me, the chore of having to do it. Because you want to do it, right? I mean, we want to do it. We want to be obedient to God. But then there's that thought back there that goes, you know what? This is really, this is a struggle for me. This is, this is, this is as real as, as it gets. Because, you know, some of us that are just now coming into giving, I want to speak into your life for me because what he's saying has so much validity. Because think about it, man. If you've never tithed before and you begin to start tithing, or you begin to start giving, what's the first thing that begins to happen? Yeah, everything goes wrong. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the washer and dryer go down, the refrigerator, the kid gets his tooth knocked out, man playing soccer, and you got to go to the orthodontist or the doctor or whatever. Uh, the car blows its engine, the oil runs out because you forgot to put oil in it or whatever. But there are things that begin to happen in our walk, and you go, see there, that's why I don't do it. We begin to grieve. And we talked about that in the second what test about that the giving – the, the two enemies of giving are, number one, selfishness, that we just have a selfish heart. It's all about me, 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 me. And the second one that he's referring to is after we give, the enemy attacks us with grieving. That, man, I could have done something else with this, and we're not trusting the Father with it. So, man, I want to speak that into your life because I know that's been me. I'm a, I was a griever. I was a griever. And so I want to talk about that for a second because let me ask you this. Without raising your hand, we did this at Life Group, and it was an interesting um, thing that we've seen where one of the relationship gave, and the other one didn't want to give. How many of you are that way? Don't raise your hand. Just think about that, right? Because isn't that where you guys, that's where you guys were, right? You want to share a little bit about that, Leah? Well, I was raised in the church, and my grandparents and my parents were big givers they always gave and so I was taught to give and not only give tithes but to give offerings you don't do one and not the other you just do both and when we got together <laughs> he wasn't a giver <laughs> and he would stress so much that I didn't even give because of his stress and um, but I kept praying and praying and praying and let me ask you did you ever preach to him I spoke to him and um, tried to explain to him quite a few times, but um, I, I didn't feel like he understood. He, and that's why I started praying. I kept saying, God, he don't understand. You're going to have to give him revelation on this because he's not understanding. And, and you got to understand at the time, this is back when we were, did the first blessed life. And at that time, we, were, we didn't have enough money to pay the bills already. And now you're wanting me to give away something I don't have, and I'm already short. Yeah. Um, but right. and so when, we, when I did, and I, I got my butt kicked, um, you know, who wants to bless a whiny kid? Um, um, <laughs> Say that again so someone else can hear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, so, you know, every time we come up short, I tell her, look, see, if I didn't write that check, we'd be okay right now. But look, you know, here we are. We're... So it was, it was hard. It it's was... all about the heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's all about the heart. See, you can do something out of obedience. Watch this. And that's anything. That's not just finances. That can even be in your marriage. You know, that you're loving your spouse just because you're not leaving your spouse. And you, you might be there today where you're struggling in your marriage, and the only reason you're there is because God said you're supposed to be there. And you're not supposed to leave her, or you're not supposed to leave him. It's all about the heart, though. What happens if we surrender that heart? God honors that because it's a condition of the heart. So the Bible says, it says, you know what? Man looks at the exterior. of We look at each other. We see what we can see. But God looks at the condition of our hearts. It's all about the heart. And that's what you're seeing within this marriage. And I know there are some of you here that are in that same relationship with your husband or wife. And you want to give, but there's, and here's the deal. It, I love, Leah, you spoke some huge truth. It's going to come only by revelation knowledge. Mm -hmm. Your preaching to them will not change them. Mm -hmm. It won't work. What comes, and I love what she said. She said, I just started praying for him. The Spirit of God can do more in your husband or in your wife, mm -hmm. your partner, than you can ever do. 
in trying to preach to them. He's bigger, and he knows what's really inside there, the struggles that they're having. And so it's important that we realize that, church. It's important that we understand that if you don't have a revelation knowledge, and you're there right now, maybe you're at that place where you want to give, but it's a struggle like Nick and Leah are having right now. Can I challenge you? Go to the Father and just say, you know what? I really need revelation of this. I need an understanding of what your word says about giving. And it's okay to ask the Father that. You know, David, man, struggled in a lot of different areas with his relationship with his Father, the Heavenly Father. And he went to the Heavenly Father a lot and said, man, one minute, it was almost like David was kind of bipolar because one minute he'd be praising the Lord and the next minute he's going, why are you putting me amongst these people? Why are you doing this? But David, man, was just real with the Father. Do you realize that God already knows the question that you want to ask him? He already understands that you struggle in your faith. He already knows this. And he says, you know what, why don't you come to me and talk to me about that and just be honest because when we voice it and we get it out, now God says, now I can do something with that. It's very powerful, very powerful statement. So now you've gone through the blessed life your second time. Mm-hmm. The first time was a struggle. We did yeah. it about two years ago. We probably won't do it again for another two years or so. Um, what's different now? Talk to us about um, how is giving and generosity different? What are you doing now that you weren't doing before? Well, we're, we're tithing, and we're tithing right up front. Um, I think that was my big thing. You know, I, I didn't get the whole faith thing you know I, I made it a bill and if i had enough left I'd, I'd cut a check might not be 10 percent, but it'd be something and i was driving to work one day and this voice goes this is faith you cut the check before you know you're going to make it you know so that's that's what we're doing and uh and we're making it you know still don't have enough money to make it but you know no, that's the story of the world but we're we're making it you know it's amazing it's amazing leah Anything I just add? I just enjoy him giving and, and I don't you know I, I mean it, to me it was very important because I seen the blessings when I gave God blessed me tremendously and I wanted him to share that with him because I know once you give and you don't give to give you just give because it's your heart yeah. and God just blesses you so much when you give right for the right motives it's all about that motive, guys. Everything we do is about our motive. Yes, sir. You know, when that, when that hit, I was on my way to work. You know, so it's 5 o'clock in the morning, and I'm driving down the freeway, and here's this voice in my head telling me that. I mean, I couldn't wait to get there and call her until I get it. I get it, you know. So. Amen. Thank you all. Y'all give it up for them. Thank you, guys. All right, I think I have. Do I have one more? Or do I got two more? I don't know if I'm going to make it through everyone. I know one of them's going. One of those couples is going, Phew. Praise God. But um, what I want to do is bring Tara up because Tara's got a cool story too. Um, I love, I, I tried to do it so we have some married couples and we have some individuals and we kind of have a little bit of both. And then I'm going to might have to wrap it up and, and save the next couple for last because we've only got a few minutes and I want to make sure we get you out of here on time and we have time to do the big gift. So you all know Tara. If you don't know Tara, Tara has been with us, man, longer than anybody I think. In I'm OG, church. y'all. She's, oh, she's original, I'm OG. Original. Gangster. God daughter. Sure, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> OGD, I don't know. OGD. All right, so she came, she, her and her family came when we actually used to have a, a very first life group that was at Java Junkies. Man, when Java Junkies used to actually be the original Java Junkies, which is in the front building out on the square. It was really, really cool. And so we actually used to meet with a small group of people. And I don't even, we were actually, were we even, did we even meet here yet? Or were we, we didn't even have a building yet. And we started with our, I mean, that's like pre-quest day. That's like BC before, or before BJ before Jesus or what. It was BQ before quest. And so that, her, her and her family been here since then. We got the building. They, of course, came a part of that. And then she drifted for a little bit and tried to find another church like ours, like what if, um, you know. And that's not exactly what happened, but okay. okay something okay. like that. <laughs> and then, along and song. then she's come back, and since she's been back, I've watched God do an amazing work in this young lady. And she's still growing. She's got a lot of, lot of room for growth, but it's really neat. So uh, same question for you, Tara. You know, um, I have to do this with Tara, okay? I didn't have to do this <laughs> with anybody else. In like, you know, a half a page or less, oh, God. Um, <laughs> you know, tell us what, what was generosity and giving like before the blessed life? What was your thoughts and your, your, your process there? Well, I didn't really know. I mean, I wasn't really taught. Um, I knew you were supposed to, but I didn't really know why. I didn't know how. I knew um, I grew up in a Christian church in DeSoto, and they passed the offering plate, and I'm just like, 
I was supposed to put a dollar in that. <laughs> I didn't have a dollar to put in there, but I didn't know why. So it just wasn't very, um, I was never taught the correct way. And so just being told to do something, I want to know why I'm doing it. And um, th that's kind of how my first thoughts were towards it. I love that because a lot of our younger generation now, and, and I know sometimes we think badly about the younger generation, and really we don't. It's just that they, their thinking and their processing is different than us as an older generation. Um, we've talked about this in our executive team, where the older generation, we give out of obedience. We give because this is what we were told to do, and that's what we've done. Um, all of our lives. So some of the older, the younger generation is coming up. They want to know why. They want to know why are we giving into this. And usually, man, if you'll present with younger people and the younger generation, and you younger people can give me an amen on this, right? Because the younger generation, if you'll give them a reason why, they'll be all in. Amen. Yep. They don't want to do sure. it just because out of just blind faith. They want to see the results of why they're going to give and what the results of that are going to be. That's a huge, huge separation. I know we talk a lot about Generation X or, or, the, or the, the generation and go, you know, uh, I, you know, they don't give. They don't serve in the church. They need a reason why. And I think us older folks that are here could learn a lot from that and understand the meaning behind that because it'll, it'll transform uh, the way we think about the next generation. I think that's just a really cool. All right, so what what spoke to you? What was the message that kind of was that aha moment for you? Um, a couple of them. Um, one was the, the uh, first fruits. There was a big one. And then spirit of mammon, because I didn't know what spirit of mammon was. I didn't understand, again, the why. I mean, it's um, having blind faith is amazing, but having the scripture to back it up and know why you're doing what you're doing and seeing what it can do or what you if you just let go and let God and let him have it, because it does anyways, you will see it come back tenfold. And it's, if you just, if you know it, why you just do it, you know, it's, and then you just kind of move towards that. But yeah, mainly those two were the two big ones, but um, I don't want to be unfruitful. I don't want to be a tree that doesn't give fruit. So those are, those are kind of why. That's really good, yeah. That's good. Okay, then finally, of course, I'm asking all of these, with that truth of understanding the principle of first. Um, and then the principle of multi, uh, the principle of mammon, the spirit of mammon, and how the spirits of mammon can uh, your money is depending on what spirit you were allowing to control. That's what that message was. Was you know if we give it to God, then God controls it. If we keep it ourselves, then the spirit of mammon can have control over it. What are you doing differently now today? What's different in your life, say before the blessed life message? Uh, well, before I was tithing, but I wasn't tithing my ten percent. And so then I started, um, I was praying about myself. We went through the, the partnership where we, um, the partnership meeting where we saw our finances and it was really laid upon my heart. Like, I really need to do more. I need to do more. I give my, my talent, but I'm not really giving my heart, my treasure, my money. So I wanted to give more. So I started giving more and going and stepping out into faith. And I was blessed back with that. Um, I was given, I've been at my job for five years, and it's been two years since I got a raise, and when I started doing that, I got a 10% raise. Wow. Man, God's good. Yeah, amazing. God's All good. Thank you, Tara, so much, Thank man. Y'all give it up for Tara real quick. All right, I only have a couple minutes, so you guys got out of it. So, uh, but I do want to talk about you guys just a little bit. These guys are an amazing couple. Uh, Errol and Teresa joined us about four months ago, three, four months ago. And God is beginning to just, it's, it's the typical response we're getting at Epic Life Church where the truth of what we're speaking that's not being spoken of, they're learning and they're growing and they're maturing. And their story of generosity and understanding um, how God is blessing them because they're putting him first and they're letting him have control over every of their life is amazing. We'll have to share that one day, but we're running out of time. And so I want to uh, go into a, one thing and then we're going to get out of here. Uh, two things. Number one is why the big gift weekend? Why the testimonies? Um, well, the bottom line is she referred to you later earlier. Uh, Tara actually just referred to you about the partnership meeting. As partners, we do a once-a-year meeting, and we kind of lay everything out. There's nothing we do that's a secret here at Epic Life Church. For partners, if you're a partner of Epic Life Church, if you ever want to see the finances of our church, in other words, you want to know where the money's going, how much is coming in, it's not a secret. We don't, like, hold it to ourselves and go, oh, that's just for us. Uh, and you have to be a pastor or have a special license or something to look at it. If you are a partner, you call up to the church, get in touch with Mr. Anthony Wild. He's our uh, secretary, what we call our secretary, or treasurer. I'm sorry, I said secretary. That's actually Pastor Corey. But you can call Mr. Anthony, um, set an appointment with him, and he will bring you to our desk and, 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 and lay down the finances 
for our partners. We don't keep any of that secret. But what we want to do as a, as a church is we want to do more. And there's a, there's a saying that God gave me years ago, man, together we can do more. And so the tithe is God's. It belongs to running the house and doing everything that needs to be done in order for us to have Epic Life Church every Sunday and during the week, okay? Um, but in order for us to do more, as you see, we have reach, uh, all, all the banners in the, in the children's ministry, back in the back, up front, it says reach. Reach means uh, raise eternal and community hope. Our object is to get out of these walls and to do more into our community, such as um, we have people calling us on a regular basis, man, asking us to help with their home, trying to do something, whether it's mow the lawn or fix their front porch or paint their house, or uh, we've had a bathroom that's been caved in that we've needed to go in and fix, and that stuff costs money for us to take care of, and so I'm telling you that part of that is going to go in towards helping the community and being a brighter light uh, in our area, but we need funding to be able to do that. The other thing that we want to do is, uh, if you look around, I know it's a giving message, but even still, look around this building. It's, it's pretty packed in here. Um, and we've added some chairs on a normal Sunday when we're not talking about finances. This place is packed. We're believing for 200 people next Sunday. We believe we're going to get it. Uh, we believe God's going to honor that, and we've been so faithful. And so that's expansion. We need to grow. We want to reach more people. But here's the bottom line truth. Most people who walk into a gathering that's 80% full or, or more will not come back the next Sunday because they feel like there's not a place for them. That's the bottom truth. And so we're going to expand. We want to take this entire wall and kick it out and uh, it's going to add about another 1,000 square foot, which is more tables. We want to keep as much and long as possible as we're growing, keep our tables because that's who we are. It's part of what we're doing, right? But there are going to be moments like Sunday, next Sunday, we're pulling up the tables. We're going to do all chairs in order to get more people in here. So we want to grow. And, and the reason we want to grow is the message of freedom and our identity is very important, and it's needed here in this community. And then so that's part of that. Some of that giving is going to go to there. And then finally, the last thing is, in um, September, September 13-ish, I'm keeping that word ish there, we kick off um, one of the most exciting things that I am pumped about, and that is Freedom Sessions. 28 weeks, actually 32 weeks of intensive freedom ministry that's going to be taking them from step by step by step in what it means to be free. And so that's their identity in Christ. That's dealing with hurt habits and hangups. It's all the junk and stuff that we deal with. I'm praying and believing that all of you will take that journey. And, and, and sometime between when we started and the, and the sessions that come through, that you'll be a part of that and take yourself through it. Because it doesn't, you don't have to have an addiction like alcohol or drugs or whatever to have stuff in your life that you need healing from. Amen? So we were believing that we can put that put people through that. The freedom sessions for one person to go through cost $60. It's not that expensive. I get it, right? But the community that we're trying to reach, that could be, that could be a game changer. So what would it be? We're not going to turn away anybody. Listen to me this morning as your pastor. I will not turn away anyone. So, man, you can sponsor those folks. So some of the giving that's coming in to, uh, to today is going to go towards that ministry in helping people that can't afford the $60. It's that, that's just the price for the book. They're $20 a piece, and it's 32 weeks, and they'll go through these, and they'll have the books that we can so we can order those books and have them for them, okay? So that's what it's going for, okay? And if you need to see records, if you need to see books, if you need to see this going into places, man, all you got to do is call Mr. Anthony up, and we'll set that up for We don't hide nothing in our church, okay? We are very, very transparent, and if you know me at all, I'm a very transparent person. But the only thing we we do challenge you on that is that you must be a partner so if you're just a regular tender or a guest we're not going to show that to everybody we want you to be a partner because partners have more investment they're they're here they've they've gone through all the classes and heard me preach about partnership and what it means to be a partner here at our church okay and so that's what we're going to do so what we're asking you before you leave today we're going to pray in a moment and i'm going to pray the blessing of deuteronomy 28 over our entire church um, the powerful blessing that's in there that we get to uh, get to have because we're believers in Jesus Christ and because we're, we're, we're co-heirs with Christ, and that's Deuteronomy 28. So here's what we're asking. Whether you're going to give online this morning or whether you're giving through an envelope, I'm going to challenge you to give above your tithe, above that generously 
to the church. And so we're going to pray, and as, as we're praying, will you ask the Father, and hopefully you've been doing it all through the week. I know some of you have already come prepared with that. My wife and I have. I do have mine. I'm not I'm, I'm trying to show, to show off, but this is my giving, and I'm, I'm putting this in the, in the giving uh, envelope at the end of service. Um, and, this, and it even says it on the top, it said, or on the back, it says big give. And so if you'll mark it, if you're going to do that, on other, put that giving on other. Okay, not on commitments. Commitments is our tithe and offering, okay? But under other, put, just put that amount, whatever amount the Lord. Don't, please, listen to me. Do not let condemnation keep you from doing this. So if, all, if God's speaking to you to give $5, then praise God, give that seed. That's a great seed, praise God. If God's telling you to give $1,000, praise God, give $1,000. And here's the thing. No one's going to treat it any different. We want you to be obedient to whatever it is that the Father's telling you to give, okay? And so we're doing that. Right on the back, I also wrote on the back of mine, I just put big give, and so that way um, the, the leaders that, that take care of all this stuff, they'll know what it's going for. And then what we'll do is at the end of a uh, uh, message next Sunday, at the end of the message next Sunday, we'll tell you how much came in, okay? So let me pray with you, and then I'm going to bless you, and then we're going to, uh, Easter's next Sunday. We had a video. We're not going to play it due to time. We want to get you guys out of here. It's only 11.59, so I'm going to get you out of here early, but we do want you to be generous. We want you to give, and I want to pray this special blessing over each of you. Some of you are familiar with this blessing, and so I want to bless this over you today as the body of Christ, and this is what it says. Deuteronomy 28, you can pray this over your family every Sunday or every day because it will bless you. It will change your view of our Heavenly Father. So if you'll join me, let me pray for you. Would you receive this blessing from your pastor today? Now it shall come to pass that if you'll diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all of his commandments, which we only have two commandments, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. The commandments which I give you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And he shall, and all these blessings will come upon you, and they will overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, and the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds the increase of your cattle, and of the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall you, your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord, I love this, the Lord will cause you, your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouse and in all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. The Lord will establish you as holy people to himself, just as he swore to you if you keep those commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Then all the people of the earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid. That word afraid is about respect. And, and the Lord will grant you plenty of good in the fruit of your body in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground, in the land in which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hand. You will lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You will be above only and not be beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and careful to observe them, so shall you not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right or to the left or go after other gods. Heavenly Father, we love you and we honor you today. And Lord, as we get ready and prepare our hearts to give, Lord, whatever that means to every one of us, every family, every representative of your kingdom today, Lord, I pray that you'd speak to all of our hearts and that we would receive that word. Lord, we thank you that you're the provider. Lord, from the, you, you, have, you own a cattle on a thousand hills, Father. And, and so, Lord, we just thank you that, you, uh, that you, you own it all. And so, Father God, we just submit this to you today. And we thank you for the increase of every family here in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we thank you for Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, next Sunday. Lord, we pray for a powerful experience, Father, that as people come in, that they'll hear a message, Father, the gospel, that they can be the men and women that you're calling them to be. Lord, that they can be set free, Father God. That, Lord, that they can look at the, whatever it is that they're going on in their life, Father, no matter what it is, Father, that you want to bless them and that you have a plan and purpose for their life. Even in the sorrow, even in the darkest moments of their life, Father, you are there. You have not abandoned us. 
You don't forsake us, Father. And so, Lord, I just thank you for that, for every person in this place. I thank you, Lord God, that all the chairs will be filled next Sunday, Lord God, and we'll be able to make an impact in this community. Lord, I pray as the pastor of this church, I ask you in Jesus' name that you would let a light shine from this place, that every person around here, Lord, this neighborhood, this city, this county, Lord, this state, that we could have an impact, Lord God, for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Lord God, that we would load up heaven and we would unload hell. Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we love you and we honor you today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you believe that, man, would you give the Lord a praise offering? Come on. (laughs) 